Delsa, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. How are you? Good. Good? <laughs> okay. There are... Uh, Okay, now let us begin. Uh, today I am going to talk on uh, right uh, livelihood. I call it uh, skillful livelihood. Uh, all of you have to have uh, some kind of livelihood to make your uh, living, to earn. Uh, in order to sustain yourself, your family and so on. So, this livelihood has to be right livelihood. And uh, we always must uh, ask ourselves uh, the question whether this livelihood is ethical. It must uh, answer your own conscience. When you do a certain job, you should not feel guilty. <coughs> it must be an honest livelihood. Even when you, <coughs> suppose when you uh, make uh, a donation, uh, giving dana, one of the most important things is the thing that you have earned should have been earned honestly. Therefore, it has a very important ethical, moral, aspect. So, uh, if it is uh, going against your spiritual practice, religious practice, uh, going against your own conscience, that is not the right kind of life or right job. Uh, and therefore, uh, I remember somebody uh, found a liquor shop for sale and then this person, a woman, found the liquor shop is very good uh, business that she can earn a lot of money. At the same time, she questioned her, her own conscience. If she bought the liquor shop and sell liquor, what that liquor is going to do? People drink and get drunk and sometimes they go home and beat people behave very badly, loses his uh, shame, and uh, he keeps, if he, that person keeps doing it again and again, then he destroys his health. He will destroy his liver. He can even die of cirrhosis. Not only one person, many, many people who 
take liquor, most of the time they end their life in cancer, cirrhosis, and die. And therefore, she thought, although this b brings me money, a lot of money, I should not do that. So she gave up. Also, if you have dishonest job, every time you go to work and come home, you feel guilty when you think of the the danger of that job, you even cannot sleep well. And therefore we have to assess the kind of job, whether a job is job uh, qualifies as a skillful livelihood uh, by means of the uh, there will be a uh, lot of problem. So we have to consider the qualities of the job you are going to do. First level is, there are three levels that you have to consider. First level is, first level of inquiry is we examine whether the job inherently harmful to others or to yourself. Inherently means the nature of job is harmful to either you to you to you or to others. For instance if you work in a certain chemical company. While you are working in the same chemical company, you may deal with lot of harmful chemicals. And you also have to, the company has to release all waste the material in the in the factory they produce there will, there will be a lot of waste material they all they release to the earth or water and thereby we pollute the water pollute the earth and kill many many living beings birds squirrels other insects and sometimes destroy, make the grass poisonous and those uh, cattle eat that grass also will be poisoned. When you know that it is harmful to you as well harmful to them, even though it is very tempting job, you get a lot of money, you should not undertake that job. The second level is whether the job uh, causes us to break any of the five moral precepts. What are the five moral precepts? Killing, Yes, stealing, sensual misconduct, lying and drink. If the job is a, a sort of a killing, a, a bed tour or chicken processing centers, turkey processing centers and uh, hog killing center, cattle killing center. This may be very enticing, tempting, bring lot of money. 
you participate in killing and thereby you break the first precept. If the, if the job is dealing with smuggling, that is stealing. Smuggling is stealing. Or money laundering, that is sell, buying and selling illegal money. Illegal products, illegal drugs, that is stealing. And if somebody engage in selling and buying women for sexual misconduct, for prostitution, that is wrong livelihood that you break the third precept. If you cheat in business, some people cheat their income tax. They cheat, they may have, uh, uh, if they are doing business, they may have two books, two ledgers, one to keep for themselves, other to show to the government. And when they file income tax, they, de they do not declare the correct amount of an income and expenditure. They, however, found, find some means to cheat the government. So that is the thing that one should not undertake. And then, <coughs> third level is we must ask whether other factors related to the job make, uh, make it difficult for the mind to settle down. That means you know you may be hunting for jobs and one job is open. There are a lot of uh, opportunities, insurance, high pay, retirement, and all these things you will get. And uh, then, but at the same time, you have to think of uh, the environment. This is, this is very important thing to <coughs> remember. <coughs> we must protect the environment. We should not destroy plants, animals, rivers, and water. Environment is extremely important for for life of everybody. Animals, humans, plants, insects, and water. And if some company doesn't care for the environment and think only of money and try to hire people, for higher pay, they will destroy the environment. They become very unfriendly with the environment. As Buddhists, we talk about practicing metta, practicing loving friendliness. When we undertake a wrong kind of job, that destroys environment, we cannot practice metta, cannot practice loving friendliness, because our conscience always pricks our mind. We know that we are trying to be, trying to practice metta, it never works. 
we become hypocritical. On the one hand, in job we do wrong things. On the other, we try to practice metta. I remember some of my friends who were raising animals. And then they had to do all sort of wrong things, the unethical things to these animals to make them look healthy, including castration and so forth. That is cruelty to animals. Business may be good, but they hurt animals. Sometimes they kill. So they cannot practice metta. Or sometimes people practice, people do various type of jobs which are very harmful to entire society. Like producing various kind of uh, insecticides, herbicides, they are very harmful. Once you produce certain, invent certain insecticides and kill little insects, you not only kill them, but you also reduce the production of various fresh produce. For instance, bees, bees pollinate various plants. When they pollinate, we get good, uh, only, not only uh, honey, but also we get good fr fruit, nuts, vegetables. But if you kill the insects like bees using various chemicals, the, that will harm the society and reduce the fresh produce and uh, eventually there will be a lot of problems in the world. Even killing these insects is that harmful. And sometimes some uh, insects help other insects to live. And we all know some insects make their homes and produce babies and they multiply and they spread they, 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 they multiply their population and pollinate other things. You know this uh, bees, cows, uh, milk and alfalfa plants. These three are very big uh, jobs, very big uh, business. Alfalfa plants, bees and milk. What, me, what it means is that people who raise bees, they are very big companies. They have these big trucks, 18 wheelers. They put bees, thousands of bees, they make artificial beehives, put thousands of bees and drive to farms where they plant to grow alfalfa, alfalfa plants. In At night they would go, they, they, they have contract with alfalfa farmers, they go in the evening in their trucks with millions of bees and early morning they re open the truck, release those, all these bees, they go to the alfalfa farms and uh, they have lot of flowers, so they take pollinate. 
they take nectar and take pollen and bring put into their hives in the truck after some days these bees bring lot of nectar and pollen into the truck and filled with the hives then the the truck goes to another farm they then they release these bees they do the same thing and bring lot of pollen and honey and nectar that in turn into honey then what happened alfalfa farmers have a very big rich alfalfa uh, uh, farm alfalfa uh, uh, what do you call harvest and they feed milking cows with this alfalfa plants alfalfa and then cows produce more milk cows produce more milk and therefore bees alfalfa and cow milk are related very big business if somebody destroy these uh, bees they destroy the entire alfalfa products and uh, get less milk from cows so therefore when one uh, undertakes a job they must think of how they uh, their jobs is going to affect the food product fruit fruit, cha- fruit, uh, fruit chains insects plants and environment that is very important they saw loving friendliness loving friendliness is absolutely necessary when we uh, to keep in mind when we uh, take a job uh, so at the same time now there, there is another factor to take into consideration when we try to find the right or skillful job or livelihood that is your intention intention we we studied earlier in under right thought intention is also called karma chetana so your your livelihood can turn into a wholesome karma or unwholesome karma holds when you have wholesome thought compassionate thought loving thought generous thought then you you do a job with right attitude and commit right wholesome karma if the thought is uh, wrong harmful full of uh, hatred like if you have if you find a job in a gun producing factory children we must understand guns never bring life guns kill people if you are, if you if there is a job in a bomb making factory if you apply for a job get the job and then you know that by all means when, when you uh, help somebody to make bombs you definitely use the bombs to kill others that's not right livelihood and buying and selling uh, animals for meat is not right livelihood buying and selling poison is not right livelihood so buying and selling uh, drugs is not right, right livelihood also if we if we cheat in business that is not right livelihood so goal of uh, right livelihood is not only making money 
but also protecting the environment, especially our mental environment, psychological environment. We should be able to come home every evening and uh, think that I have done a wonderful job which helps the world, which helps the poor, which helps the society, which helps the environment, which helps animals. So I am doing a very wholesome, uh, right uh, job. Even if we get more money, a lot of money by doing wrong jobs, you cannot sleep at night, you may even have nightmares because the job was so bad. Sometimes jobs are very noisy. Uh, before you get older, uh, 70, 80, you may lose your hearing if you work in a very noisy place. And also if uh, people uh, that who are very hostile, uh, violent, in such environment we should not work. Uh, and we have to avoid by all means such uh, places. Then uh, selling and buying weapon and poison and liquor, especially liquor, and uh, cheating in business. All these are wrong livelihood. And therefore, when we want to select the right livelihood, we have to take all this into consideration. Uh, number one is our own health. If you work in certain place and the things that they produce in that place cause you headache every evening and eventually cause cancer and uh, it causes your general health, uh, that job you should not undertake. Even though pay is very high, you should not undertake. At the same time, if you, if you know that your job is uh, leading to others' harm, uh, others' insecurity uh, other, and causing others' lives, you should not undertake that kind of job. We all must remember the first precept, we all have right to live. We have all right have right to live. All living beings have right to live. Nobody has any right to take the right of others to live. That means if we destroy the right of others, de destroy lives, we deprive them of their right to live. There are various uh, things that people uh, do to uh, li destroy lives and we should not undertake them. And we always must think uh, we, we do a job uh, with uh, compassion, understanding, patience and uh, uh, without feeling guilty later on. So there are many things uh, that we have to take into consideration. I simply wanted to mention very all, the, all these few things uh, when you undertake you may, um, of course, you may not have any such intention to accept a harmful job uh, and that you have to keep in mind all the time. So, right livelihood is, ex is extremely important as not only part of the Buddhist practice but also as the part of the uh, harmonious living with all factors related to our life. Uh, animals, human, environment, water, earth uh, um, and the food chain, all this affect, uh, our, our, our job can affect all of them and therefore we have to take 
all this into consideration. All right, now, as I told you at one time, my talk would limit to only half an hour, and I opened the rest of this uh, se session for your questions. Now, if you have any question, you raise your hand or thumb and ask the question. And loud and clear. <laughs> Okay. Okay, anybody? Yes? Okay, Anaya. Yes, Anaya, what is your question? Um, so, can only physical things harm you, or um, what are some mental things that could also harm you? Mental state of uh, right kind of job? Um, like, what are some mental things that could harm you, like thoughts? Shock. Thoughts. Thought, yes, yes. Uh, thought is you have uh, uh, intention, intention to uh, hurt someone. As I mentioned, producing guns, producing weapons, uh, and also doing some illegal trading uh, and cheating in business, all this hurt your, uh, harm your mind because you know you are not sincere, you are dishonest and also you are, uh, you are not compassionate. Uh, all these things can hurt your mind uh, and eventually when we do something that hurt our mind. When the mind is when when the mind is uh, uh, hurt uh, with anger and uh, and also uh, tension and so forth, that affects our nervous system. When they affect our nervous system, there will be very. Uh, harmful uh, chemistry, uh, hormone, which goes around our body through blood circulation. And then that hurt our health, general health. And sometimes uh, uh, psychologically it is harmful. Uh, when you have harmful thought, uh, harmful intention, uh, psychologically that can affect the person. That is uh, that is sort of a mundane side, uh, material side. A spiritual side, that becomes a bad karma, unwholesome karma. Unwholesome karma also produces unwholesome results. As unwholesome results, we, we will have a lot of pain and suffering and unnecessary sickness. And all these are the results of bad intention and bad thought and that is how it affects our life. Thank you. You're welcome. And I saw somebody else raising hand. Yes. <coughs> um, I had a question about what you said about uh, like right jobs. Yeah, so, could you speak up? I cannot hear well. Yeah, so I had a question about what you said about having the right jobs for people. So you said not to take a job that puts yourself in a harmful position because it's not good for you, like can cause uh, deadly diseases later on. 
But what if like the necessary jobs like a firefighter, police officer and stuff like that where you need to put yourself in a bad position to help other people? What uh, what what should be done then? Still I did not hear you well. Could you speak up clearly? <laughs> a little louder. Yeah, so I had a question about what you said about having the right job for people. So what uh -huh. happens if you if like you want to be a firefighter or power officer where you're putting yourself in a dangerous position to help other people. Yeah. If uh, your job hurts other people Helps. or your, your product hurts other people? No, if your job helps people. Helps. Health, yes. If your job held, uh, hurt, uh, hurt other people uh, and then uh, make them uh, unhealthy, yeah? No, if your job helps people. Help people? Helps. Yeah, help. Yeah. That is, they are good jobs. Uh, helping others, uh, either as uh, voluntary help or even help for, uh, for as a job like uh, doctors, nurses, hospital staffs they are doing wonderful job and they are doing a job at the same time helping people now when we do a job as a job we must think that I am doing not a job, I am doing a service. I want to help these people, I want to see them healthy, I want to see them strong, I want to see them happy, uh, I want to see them live harmoniously, I want to see them living in peace. With this intention you do your job, then you are doing a wonderful job. That's the right kind of job. At the same time, you are doing the right thing while thinking that you are helping others. Getting money, and, you know, getting paid for the job is uh, not the primary uh, motive. Of course, you have to have money to live. But at the same time, use that opportunity to do right thing to gain, to commit a wholesome karma. So you can convert your uh, whole, uh, whole right livelihood, right work, right job to commit a wholesome karma. That's, that's a very good question. Sure. Yeah, Yes, any other question? I know some people uh, for very little money they go and help uh, uh, people build houses if they have uh, uh, you know skill in uh, construction work uh, have some uh, engineering education uh, architectural education, uh, they can go, they go to various uh, places in their own country or foreign countries and help people to build houses for those very, very poor people using their skill. They might get very little money, just basic subsistence but they do it out of compassion to help them. On the one hand, it is a job. On the other hand, they help people. Uh, so that's, that's a wonderful thing. Yes. <coughs> uh, Troy, why don't you ask your question? I think that uh, yeah, Troy has a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I had a question. Um, it's not as related to today's topic specifically, but a couple of sermons ago, 
when we were talking about um, right speech and the middle path. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> if the middle path is in the middle, then the way I think of it, there should be two extremes, right? Yeah. And that would be indulgence and one would be abstinence, like avoiding completely, right? Yeah. And so if right speech, for example, is not lying at all, then what are the two extremes? In the, uh, <laughs> in the, this middle path, we have to understand what the middle path is. Uh, extremes, to, you mentioned extremes. Extreme is uh, self-mortification or self-indulgence. When we avoid these two extremes, then we follow the middle path, then we follow the, uh, the path which includes right speech. And therefore, in the right speech there is no extreme. What is, what is there is the wrong speech which belongs which belong to uh, what you call self-indulgence. Wrong speech belongs to self-indulgence because they simply indulge talking all sort of wrong things, uh, t telling lies, and some people enjoy telling lies. That is a one that is one kind of extreme. Uh, that, that that we have to avoid. When you come to the right li right uh, path, middle path, uh, middle path doesn't mean that uh, little bit of wrong, little bit of right, and put together like a fruit salad. Not that is not a middle path. Middle path is definitely avoiding those two extremes and following the path which leads to peace, happiness, and liberation from suffering. In the right, uh, therefore, right speech is in the middle path. That's the middle path. Okay, and I had one other question also yeah. about the middle path. Yeah. Um, what should we do, for example, in situations where you need to defend yourself, for example, like in terms of killing, if you need to kill in self-defense, does it follow the middle path? It's, it's, uh, is bad. However, uh, I want to mention right middle path in somewhat different way too. But in this case, uh, suppose somebody is uh, just violently attacking you here and there, and then you also just without any intention to hurt the other person, you try to protect yourself. In the process, sometimes, inadvertently, one of your movements can land on a vital part of the other person and that person may die. You didn't have any intention to kill him. Even in the uh, criminal law, uh, you may be charged for uh, for uh, slaughter, manslaughter, and uh, the judge finds out, tries to find out whether you had an intention, pre-intention uh, of uh, killing the person. If they find that you did not have intention to kill, the verdict would be culpable homicide not amounting to murder. Similarly, in Kamma, if you did not have an intention to kill, you are not completing the karma, unwholesome karma. All other factors may be there, but you are not carrying the guilt of killing because you never had any intention. You rather regret that the person died at your by your hand and therefore it is not uh, considered to be unwholesome karma. Uh, perhaps uh, there will be uh, very minor uh, results of karma. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Bhante. Very good.
I think this both questions are very good. Uh, what is your name? What is your name? Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, Troy. Ah, okay. Troy, yeah, I can see Troy Gunnarsson. Okay. Anybody has any other question? Mm, Banteji, I have a question. Uh huh. So, say you're stuck with making two decisions, like um, you have to help someone with two things, but like both aren't like it's you two, and then you're stuck somewhere. Or you have to make a hard decision, which will, in both options, both of you will be suffering, but you choose the one with less suffering. So you have to like leave you two. So say you're stuck somewhere, and you have to leave you and your friend or your wife or someone, and you have to go get help for you guys. But if you leave, then you know you're leaving her behind, and it can be very scary. Or if you stay, then you risk the option of not getting help. Which option, like, how would the karma come from that? Like making the decision out of the two bad decisions. Well, um, if uh, the one who suffers most should be taken care of first. And because the other person suffering is not critical, not causing the person's life, so you can come back to that person later. But the other person, if you if the person did not receive your help, might even die. So you save that life and return to the other one. And therefore, the first. Uh, your decision to save the most critical one is better than the other one. But both have good results. Uh, but the one that is going to uh, lose life very quickly, you save that life, so you have uh, uh, strong uh, karmic results. Uh, how could I have I have a question uh, some somewhat related to the same thing. Uh, suppose if there's a patient who has a bacterial infection and uh, the doctor has to give uh, an antibiotic that will kill many millions of bacteria uh, to save the man. So how would that work? Now, uh, of course, bacteria die uh, all the time in our daily life. When we apply soap on our skin to clean our skin, all the microbes living on the skin die. But we have to clean our skin. Otherwise, we will die. Our life is uh, far more important than these uh, uh, tiny microbes. And also, uh, if we were to think of uh, saving microbes, we will be very much like genes. And genes, that's one extreme, of, I must say, one extreme. Uh, you know, Buddha allowed people to f do farming. When they do farming, they uh, kill much bigger living beings. Like, uh, uh, you know, when you farm, you may kill uh, worms, uh, some uh, grasshoppers, and so forth. But the farmer's intention is not to go out and kill those. His intention is to uh, F do the farming. Similarly, if we were to th think of all these tiny little uh, bacteria, worms, what you call microbes, we cannot live. 
and we will be very much like Jains. That's why Buddha gave up Jainism and follow the middle path. Okay? Right. <coughs> Any more questions? Where is Vidat today? <laughs> I'm here. Uh, Vidat, do you have any question? Um, no, I, I understood what he said. Huh. Troy, you can ask any question now. This is the time. Yes. Yeah. I think I asked uh, most of my questions. Okay. I think I asked them. Uh. <laughs> Anybody else that uh, Pravit? No question? I don't have any questions. I understood mainly what you said, and the question I have of making the decision out of the two wrong decisions was my only question, basically. D making a decision be between two wrong decisions? Yeah like with two decisions that are unavoidable so like you have to make a decision out of two bad options that will cause karma in the end but it will help one another that was it yeah i think uh, bad options are if, if both are bad there is no choice yeah. give up give up both <laughs> oh, okay uh, Hamdru, I have another question actually, it's related to the previous one. So, mm -hmm. uh, when you think about uh, uh, pranagata or killing an animal, so uh, will the size or the level of advancement of the animal uh, matter? Like, I mean, like killing a human and like maybe a pig or a worm or a or a, like a small animal. Like, so, so the level of uh, animal organization, I mean, like there are advanced animals, like some medium advanced animals and very primitive animals. Does that matter actually? It's certainly a matter. It's certainly a matter. No matter what at the stages of development is. You know, in uh, some sensitive things like abortion, According to Buddhism, the very moment ovum and sperm join, that moment consciousness arises. From that moment onward, that is a life. Whether one kills that primitive embryo in one day or Ten days, two months, six months, year after birth, it's the same. Because the right to live is taken away. Therefore, there is no justification for killing any being. Of course, some people kill beings to do experiments. Many uh, medicine, you know, before they market the medicine, put into the market, in the in, in the laboratories, they use various animals as guinea pigs. That is wrong. That is killing. There could be uh, humanitarian ways of inventing medicine. Uh, without killing any living beings intentionally. I remember some uh, students who have very good degrees in biology, very good remarks for biology. They refused to take medicine, go to medical school, because they are, they are, they, they feel it is very bad to kill frogs, mice, and other guinea pigs. I think that's very good. 
as as we know my 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 belief is as science is advancing advancing we become more and more sophisticated and we should be able to discover more sophisticated methods to make medicine and so forth without killing animals we use the medicine to help animals as you know at the beginning of the the world's population of living beings there were more varieties of animals than now most of them are extinct and that is going on even now many many species are going out of existence and we intentionally should not contribute that dis- or, or, or to the destruction of the animal species and therefore sophisticated uh, scientific uh, technology science uh, med- um, medical uh, uh, technology we must find out other ways now when they can make synthetic very synthetic things when rubber was very uh, rare and expensive during the war they began to dis- they, they discovered synthetic rubber and when they started plastic system of course they are harmful but when they are harmful they find something else so in our advancement in science and technology means to making things more wholesome environment friendly uh, and health friendly uh, method we have to invent that is the challenge for science <clears throat> okay any other question bante i had a question very good um so i read this uh well i watched this video about um the buddha stance on uh, like military members during times of war and the video said that the buddha understood that the need for the military exists but however he said that if one were to participate in any armed forces that he could not uh, become like a monk or anything like that to spread the word of the buddha uh, is this true or uh, how were the buddha's thoughts on this that he did not want to participate in, take up did not want to take up arms that's what you no so the video said that the buddha understood that there was a need for military members there was a ne- need for what military eh huh? for the military military yeah uh huh during like times of war and even during times of peace and the buddha said that uh if a member were to join the armed forces that they could not become uh a buddhist monk or anything like that was this true or how did the buddha feel about this yes yes it is true that uh, one who wants to protect life should not take arms should not join the armed forces he said that is true according to buddhism now sometimes uh, in some even in, in the united states there was a time that uh, joining army was mandatory it is called conscription and during that time many people uh, i know i myself uh, was in helping people to declare as uh, conscientious objectors that is uh, acceptable uh, what you call option instead of joining the army some people declared on the religious ground uh, i refuse to join the army many i mean even in the united states they 
they accepted that uh, uh, what is option and did not force them to join the army. <coughs> that is good uh, uh, Buddhist principle. I think there are certain religious sects. I don't know whether they were uh, Mormons. No. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, Amish or oh, Mennonites, some uh, religious uh, groups uh, do not join army. Is that a good, good principle? The, even you remember in the life of the Buddha, Buddha so that uh, uh, Sakyan and Kolians uh, were going to have a fight over Rohini River's water. Rohini River was uh, uh, the river water was shared by uh, Sakyan uh, people and Kolian people. And when one time there was a sort of very like a drought without rain for many months. Then the river water was level was very low, and then they uh, instead of sharing it, uh, one uh, either Sakyan or Kolians wanted to have all the water for their uh, agriculture, and the other uh, sect, what you, what you call Koli or Sakyan, said, "No, we want the water." So over that they were going to fight. They came with all ready to fight. At that time, Buddha appeared and uh, asked the people, why are you going to fight? They said, because of this problem, water problem. Then Buddha asked them, which is more valuable, the blood in a body or the water? They, of course, have to admit that the blood is more valuable than water. Then the Buddha said, if you shed all your blood, what is the use of having this water? So he gave a, a talk to them to settle the dispute amicably, peacefully, and stop fighting. That's what they did. That's, that's one occasion Buddha interfered in the armed conflict between two races. So, therefore, we, we never condone uh, armed struggle, killing, bombing, producing guns, selling and weapon, uh, buying guns and so forth. All right, friends, I think we have uh, come to the end of our session. And very good that you asked me a question. Next time, also, you uh, may ask question. Next time, I'm going to speak uh, right uh, effort. Uh, that is the sixth uh, step of the Noble Eightfold Path. I spoke on uh, right understanding and right intention. And right speech, right action, I spoke at the very beginning when I talk about wholesome and unwholesome uh, speech. And therefore, I did not uh, bring it back again. And that is why I started talking on the fifth uh, aspect of the Noble Eightfold Path, right livelihood. and. Next time, uh, when I give the talk, I will speak on right effort. So with this, uh, you you may read my eight mindful steps to happiness. There is one whole chapter on that. Uh, and come prepared, and I will give a half an hour talk, and the other half an hour you can spend asking me questions. All right. Thank you. Bye.
Thank you, Bante. Thank you, Bante. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.